Admiral's Log. We've recently had the pleasure of working with some of her allies. In this case, one of her battlecruisers teamed up with a Swedish battlecruiser. The battlecruiser, although older and far less advanced than our ship, still held herself very well in a fight against the German battleship. This is likely a testament to the British shipbuilding, as they seem to have been the original builders of the ship before it was sold to Sweden. The war against Germany is now concluded. This allows me to focus on the operations that we're running in the Adriatic. Our biggest ship yet, the Divine Broadside, has arrived in the theater of operations and will be providing assistance to the landing in Croatia. This means she'll also very likely have to engage the Austro-Hungarian Navy, or whatever is left of it. I am extremely eager to see how this ship will perform. The Divine Broadside is bigger than anything we've built by a large margin. She displaces just over 150,000 tons, giving her the same displacement as five of our battlecruisers combined. She also has about as much firepower as five of those battlecruisers combined. She has 12 side-mounted 13-inch guns per side, plus a main armament of 16-inch guns. Her beam should allow her to be a very stable firing platform and use all of those weapons effectively. We're about to find out just how well she will perform in combat. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 35. It is happening! The Divine Broadside is going to engage something in anger. Finally, for the first time, we get to see the ship. 18 16 inch guns, 24 13 inch guns, 36 5 inch guns, and 5,000 or near enough angry crew members. Um, she's also backed up by Setsu and Hashidate, but I'm considering just having these guys disengage from the fight and letting the Divine Broadside take care of these targets all by herself. The targets being the Prince Eugen, the Brechen, Meteor, and Admiral Spawn. Um, these ships, however, are probably faster than she. Nope, the Divine Broadside <laughs> It's doing 30 knots <laughs> in this light. Sorry, this heavy cruiser is doing 22. I can't even see because the tooltip's going the wrong way. Oh my god, this is going to be a slaughter. I love it. Let's go. Isn't she magnificent? Isn't she awesome? It's been a really, really, really long time since I had a crazy large ship roam around the seas. This is it. Look at that freeboard. You could park a destroyer in that freeboard. Bloody hell. I need to have this in the intro. Just like that. And here she comes. 151,000 tons of Japanese engineering. Tons and tons and tons of guns. And only one purpose, which is to further the interests of Japan. The Divine Broadside. Is she expensive? Hell yes. Is she worth it? Visually, I'd say yes. Um, efficacy? <laughs> I don't know. We're about to find out. Anyway, the ship has her 16-inch guns, and I have recently researched the 16-inch Mark III. She's still roaming around with the 16 Mark IIs, but I needed her off of the coast of Croatia to actually start getting close to the required tonnage to complete the naval invasion. Um, oh wow, it actually turns as well. It has a turning circle of 1200 meters, which is not that bad, considering. Yeah. Okay, Setsu, just maintain course. We've got Hashidate. You can go out and spot for me, right? You can go out and start locating targets. You're not allowed to shoot. Oh wow, the Divine Broadside's been detected. Whatever shall we do? Now, is this thing well protected? Um, yeah, pretty well. 14.8 inches of armor with an armor quality of 130%. She still needs to get an upgrade for that. She has 2 inches of superstructure armor, 7 inch fore belt, 7 inch aft belt. But considering how far her guns are extending forward and aft, it's basically all Citadel. So it is enormous, this thing. Now I'm really wondering how accurate she's going to be. The crew has been trained on the use of this ship, but she's never seen action. And this mixed armament is potentially going to throw the game for a bit of a loop. Because it is both considered main armament, 
Um, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Especially since I never actually have had a split armament since they got these things turned into separate weapon groups. So how well this thing is going to perform, I don't know. Let's have a look and find out. Seeing as the enemy cruiser is only doing 22... Excuse me? Knots. They're right there. Hello. Boom, 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 boom. Turn to port. Slow down. Sorry, I gotta make another cinematic out of this. I mean, it just has to get done, right? What else are you going to watch at the start of the next video while I do the Atmos log? This thing drifts like crazy. <laughs> it's like some kid drew a battleship. I don't think the game can properly process the wake that this ship has. Now, the ship's called the Divine Broadside, but the deal with the ship is it turns so slowly that I'm not sure if we're actually going to be able to get a broadside. Wait, we got different guns going for different targets, don't we? Yeah. Alright, I want you to shoot the shit out of that. 15% accuracy. That's the sight mounts, I guess. Torpedo in the water. Huh. Boom. 970 damage? With an HE shell? That partially penned the target. Yeah, I was going for uh, incendiary shells with these things, because they do ridiculous amounts of damage if they hit the target. I think, however, that own ship splashes is 50... <laughs> 53%. <laughs> the holy mother of God. This thing just gets... <laughs> Working as intended. Oh, yes. We got one torpedo coming in. I don't like that. Not so much that the ship can't handle a torpedo, although it would be a magnificent streak of luck on the part of the Austro-Hungarians if the torpedo actually manages to detonate the ship or cause a flash fire or what have you. Wait. Yeah. Um, but repairing 3% of this ship is probably going to cost millions. Jeez, that was nine hits. <laughs> I need to order more of these. These are... <laughs> These are fantastic. Just because they're so crazy. Oh my god. Where can I get more? 70... 80% chance to hit? <laughs> what the fuck? So I guess... Yeah, we have some interference from our own guns. To be sure. But beyond that... Boom, 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 boom. Uh, beyond that... I mean, we just pump out so many shells. We don't really care. This guy is going to have some issues. That's 3,500 damage. Destroyed a main gun with high explosive shells. What the hell? I am carrying standard ratio for main shells. Oh, there she goes. So yeah, I suppose the incendiary type shells are working as intended. Now I want to know what happens if I fire high explosive... Sorry, if I fire armor piercing. Because these armor piercing shells do have a substantial amount of pen. But they're semi-ballistic. So, if we hit this thing, we should start seeing substantial amounts of actual damage, as opposed to just fires that we set. Everything is going to miss. Yeah. Here comes the 13-inch barrage. Barrage? What the hell is a barrage? Barrage? And that looks a lot better. Moink. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. Oh my god, the Divine Broadside paying off is a sight to behold. Um, I did lose 33 sailors in that unfortunate event. Uh, I gained 2,500 victory points. I don't know how long the ship's going to take to repair, though. Like, she went down to... What was it? 97% fuel. No, 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 no. What the... How did I get negative XP? Define broadside got XP, sure. Um, hull damage. Doesn't say. Okay. 
Let's go to the main map and see how long it's going to take to fix it. And where they beamed it to. Because if they beamed it all the way back to Japan, that would be very unfortunate. I would really like them not to do that. Because then it's going to take another three to four months before she actually reappears on the grand stage. Provided that there is still a war on. You know... I'm not sure how long Austria-Hungary is going to last, but more importantly, perhaps, I'll not have the tonnage to complete the invasion of Croatia. Hmm. But, my god, that thing is so magnificent when it fires. And this was just a couple of outdated light cruisers. We're going to have to find some better match for her. Something with a bit more punch. Uh, it is going... Where is she? No, no, no. Jeez, I'm losing a lot of soldiers. Where is the ship? Is she still next to Croatia then? All these minefields around Japan and other territories that I now hold. Yeah, we still have the ship here apparently. Okay. Um, that's the Kayo. Where is she? There's so many ships out here. Fleet. Divine Broadside. Location. Adriatic and Ionian Sea. Okay. Damage 8%. You're fine. You're fine. I do want them to just have another go, though. I want to see that ship fight again. Anyway, with this ship in position, we are out exceeding the required tonnage. This means that ideally in seven months, we will complete the invasion of Croatia. The question is, will there be an Austria and a Hungary left to fight? Because over here we have a massive combined army which is pushing into uh, Hungary. And over here, 80%, 68% pushing into Austria. There's 315 soldiers there, but we're pushing with... I don't know, maybe just shy of 2 million men? So at this rate, it's going to start to really make it really, really difficult for Austria-Hungary to hold on. As for research, as I said, I got the 16 Mark III. Um, I suspect we're going to find a Mark II 18-inch gun or potentially a Mark III 17. You know what, I don't really care that much about the big guns anymore, especially considering what those 16 inches can do. Turret mechanisms and loading systems and stuff like that are more interesting. So let's go for turret mechanisms, increasing gun reload and aiming. Uh, and that's the only priority I'll set. As for shipbuilding, we have 130,000 tons of shipbuilding capacity that we're actively using. So I can start building some more ships. And considering that I still need a bit of room for the Divine, I'm probably... No, never mind. I'm going to build another Divine. I'm going to build another Divine Broadside. Why? Because they're amazing. Um, I also want a couple of the Arso class. And that should... There we go. Now I'm pretty nicely using that. Oh, maybe shipbuilding. Just taking less time to do shipbuilding would be very, very valuable. Hull strengthening is okay. It's eventually going to give you the half a percent. Wow. Maybe armor quality then. Because that's going to be modern armor one. Let's go for that. I don't care about the other priorities anymore. Okay. Um, let's see if Austria Hungary is going to cease to exist. It's a couple months later now, it's December 1931, and I have a couple of new ships entering and patrolling the Adriatic and Ionian Sea, ensuring the safety and security of my troops that are landing in Croatia. This is the Suma. The Suma is one of those new Yayama class super speed boats doing 49 knots. They're incredibly deadly to submarines, apparently. They also were able to make their way from Japan here in two months, which is an incredible performance. Now, two more submarines from the Austro-Hungarian fleet have been sunk, and I also have now available another group of heavy cruiser hulls, including the heavy scout cruiser. I am very interested in building another 49 knot heavy cruiser, although in the previous episode I already said, with the heavy cruiser hull that I want, which is the new ASSO class, um, I don't want to have that same sort of exploit thing going. Anyway, um, the new ships are, I think they're here, here. So, 
Okay. The Suma apparently raced to the Ionic Sea to take out two submarines and then raced back to the Arabian Sea to escort the Banjo, Gojira, Maya and Okuhotaka. All of the Gojira class. This is one boat that gets around. Holy shit. No fuel cost either, somehow. I don't know how that works. I also don't know what we've been shooting at, considering that... Oh, it must have been the submarine. Somebody started opening fire with 15-inch guns against the submarine. But hey, submarines are down and I'm not. I only have two months left. Two months. And I can actually potentially take full control over Croatia. Now, the army here used to be 130, it's now 56k. The army here is only 144, and the army here is only 167. So, slow and grinding as these battles are, progress is being made. And um, progress is also being made in my tech tree. I just showed you that I got that new cruiser research. That uh, modern... Heavy cruiser shit. Here. Uh, modern heavy cruiser 3 and 4 and the heavy scout cruiser. I am also very much working on the new turret mechanisms. So I'll be able to get advanced triple turrets. And with that get better reload time on them. Better accuracy which is very very nice. Especially since more and more of my ships are starting to rely on those triple barrel systems. The new big gun iteration is going to be the Mark V 11. Which I don't believe I use anywhere. The 11s. So I'm not very much interested in that. Now, um, these guys are going to take, I believe, one month to get to where they need to go. See, I thought they'd already gotten there. Two turns, okay. And it's basically half a battle group, 15,000 men. That's the next research I'll probably do, naval comms, so that I can get bigger uh, maximum crew limits on these groups. Now, two more months and we get Croatia. I'm not sure who's going to get Austria or and or Hungary. It could be the French, considering that I think they launched their invasion and the Russians launched their invasion on Hungary. So I suspect it's going to be those nations that actually take control over the territories, even though other nations pitched in a lot of effort and resources in order to get these ships or sorry, in order to get these uh, territories taken. But I suspect that the game works as such that the original, how should I say, the original instigator, the original launcher of the invasion is the one that actually gets away with it. 143,000 men, 57. I'm not sure we're going to be able to pull this off, actually. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, Galicia is doing its counterattack into Ukraine. And whereas before... The Austro-Hungarians had support from the Russian, oh, sorry, from the Germans. They very much do not. So it is uh, really not making any kind of progress. They have lost more than half their army, if these numbers are to be believed. Progress. Now it's January 1932. I'm going to look at those new cruiser hulls because it's another year, and that means I can design a new ship. I want to see what a heavy scout cruiser looks like. I don't think I've ever used that particular hull for any of my designs. So I'm very curious to see what that thing looks like and what it can do. Heavy Scout Cruiser. You're a big boy. 13,000 tons. 130 hull form? That's better than the Light Scout Cruiser. That's 126. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything with a hull form of 130. So that means you can easily do, what, 48 knots? I mean, this exploit still exists. So yeah, you can definitely pull that off. It's only going to cost you 12 million. And you got a heavy cruiser, which... Does that mean I can send 11-inch guns around on a platform that's capable of doing this? Wait. What the hell? There are no main towers. That's new. I haven't unlocked main towers for this hull. I've never seen this before. Not having a main tower. I always have components available. 
Modern Cruiser 4 also doesn't have main towers. 3 does. That's the compact uh, 1, 2, and 3. But just no. What's the best hull form that I have when it comes to battleships? Is that... I think it's this one. 85. Ooh. Let's see if this trick also works here. Like, if you reduce this and this and max that. Yep. As much as I love my light cruisers, I do think that this is something that needs to get fixed. Because this means that if you have... Yeah, you, you gotta have to use the Pagoda Tower, I think. Because the... Well, Modern 2 also works. Um, this ship... And I'm not actually going to completely build it. But this essentially means you can park... What? 18-inch guns? Yeah. You can park 18-inch guns on a platform that slips around the waves at 49 knots. It's only going to cost you 51 million, which is less than a heavy cruiser, mind you. The Asso class costs 74. Now, to be fair, this is without any kind of tweaks and upgrades and shit armor. But it means that um, whatever you put on this ship is going to be faster than basically any DD. Speaking of, uh, Modern Destroyer 3... I believe I'm currently using Modern Destroyer 2. Modern DD3 should also be able to do this. I push this to flank? 55? No. That's interesting. So, the other hulls are allowed to do it, but you're not? It's maybe because it doesn't have the right hull for them. This is 91. Down. Down. Let's go to 49 knots first. Yeah, 49 knots is not a pro Well, I'm not going to say it's not a problem, but it's a bit easier to pull off. Yeah. I guess around 49 knots is where this whole exploity thing stops. Interesting. Now, I guess if I want to use the scout cruiser, I'm going to have to research control systems or control stations in order to actually get a tower to fit on that hull. Like I said, it's very, very unusual to actually have to do that because most of the time they get unlocked automatically. Perhaps by prioritizing my research so much, I've actually made it a bit more difficult on myself and made it so that the control stations got so much delayed that they're not actually keeping up. They're not really going to be researching quickly enough so that I get the new holes, but not the new towers and well, you get basically get a half a ship. So we're going to have to wait for that, which is sad because I do like the Scout Cruiser. It's a nice long hull and you can put a lot of stuff on it. Anyway, um, where does that leave me when it comes to research? Because most of the time those control researchers just don't do anything. I mean, control stations, new ship parts available, none. Um, oh, fewer ship flaws, that's nice. <laughs> if you take off the priority, it's going to take you 15 months longer to do that. Good lord. And if we go for the cruiser research? I don't know what other cruiser research we're going to be doing, but I'm interested. Um, yeah, control stations. Improves ship towers. Let's go for that, I guess. And just not prioritize the turret mechanisms anymore. Okay, fine. Proceed. Here we go. Hungary of Austria-Hungary has been conquered by the Soviet Union. They have lost 352,000 men, the Austro-Hungarians that is. The Soviets lost one and a half million. But they get a nice bit of territory. And Austria has been conquered by France. They also lost a lot more, but they got the territory. Now, where does that leave me? I failed to gain control of Croatia. Fantastic. So, you guys lost your main provinces. That means that Galicia is now your capital? I guess? And France is not stopping. They're immediately moving on to Galicia. Damn. Wow, this army has respawned pretty quick. 
Can we do another naval landing? Yeah, naval landing, please, because I don't accept the outcome here. Try it again. I mean, I still got my ships here. It should be fine. Um, it's going to be a bit of a mess to sort out here. I got so many fleets here. What I want to start doing is pulling a couple of the Chiyodas back and pushing them out of service. So, Tsugaru, Yahagi, Yodo. Wow, there's a Wakaba in there as well. The Wakaba itself, another Wakaba. Yeah, you guys are going to go there. Because we do have new ships. Uh, the ships here are a couple Wakabas, but also the new cruisers? No. I still got a lot of old stuff. Not great, but it is what we have to work with. So I'm slowly going to start exchanging newer ships that are getting currently finished and or commissioned in Japan and push those into that formation so that I can pull older ships out. Wow, you're a 1923 refit of the Sanosawa. That's old. It's really old class. Here we got uh, another Gojira standing by in Gensan. Another one is coming out of commissioning in a month. So I can also start to retire some of the other battle cruisers because these got the 815 inches. And that means that the predecessor which is the Haruna class from 1925, can finally get some rest. Chitose... Yeah, Chitose is... Well, this thing is currently deployed, the Ontake. It's part of the invasion fleet, so I can't exactly pull this thing away. Unfortunately. I'm also building a slew of new heavy cruisers, and... I believe I was building another Divine Roadside. Yes, 31 months. Akitsu. Okay. So, if I want to start replacing a couple of these ships... Yeah, I'll just take the Kamikawa Maru out. I know that she's older. The reason why I'm taking this one out is just to save a bit of money. It's costing me 6 million a month. And yes, you can supposedly sell them off. Well, let's just see if that works. Uh, set crew, zero... And let's see if somebody wants to buy it. Because apparently if you have it mothballed and don't have add crew, so they don't automatically get recommissioned, you can actually use this. You can actually use this mechanic and sell these things off, supposedly. Still, I am paying 1.8 million for it. It's not ideal. I also want to take out that uh, Sanosawa class, set the crew to zero, ships mothballed. Done. Let's see if we got any takers for those ships. I don't mind selling those off to my allies, which are numerous. I have eight. Bulgaria, Egypt, the Netherlands, Canada, Belgium, Portugal, Persia, and Syria. And if at some point I link up with these fleets and it turns out that they are using my ships, I think that would be very, very funny. One month later, Bulgaria would like to buy the heavy cruiser Cannon for 23 million which is 47% less than its original cost. Yeah, sure. I'll take your money. Happily. It's going <laughs> to float me one month. And it's going to reduce my expenses. And Be <laughs> Belgium would like to buy the Kamikawa Maru for 57 million, which is 63% less than its original cost. Um, I don't mind. If I still have 63% rest value, or rather 37% rest value, I think that's really good. I mean... Cars depreciate more than that, right? So, yeah. Go and have some fun with your new warship. <laughs> you With your 24 DDs, your two battleships, and your two battle cruisers, I mean. I'm sorry. Holy crap. The Belgians are not messing around here. Okay. Wasn't expecting that. Um, as for this naval invasion, apparently... Sometimes it's over there, sometimes it's over there. Like, make up your mind. Where do you want me to invade? Because now I have to relocate the whole bunch. And I really do not appreciate having to go into the minefield that is Kataro. Or sorry. No, never mind. That... Yeah, I think it is Kataro with a minefield. Crap. 
Oh, this could get expensive. This could get expensive. I hope not, but it is possible. That is going to be pretty costly. As to the ships here, um, I can now start selling off some more of my old ships. So the ones that are currently at Gibraltar. So that is the Katsurugi. That's a Yamashiro. No, you're a new one. Uh, this one? Wakabe? Sorry, Wakaba. Uh, you're an older... Where are these ships at? Oh, they're being repaired for a month. Right, okay. Well, we've got to fix them up before we sell them off, I suppose. It's fine. As for the rest of the ships, what other things could I sell off? What other older designs do I have that I no longer wish to use and I could still potentially make some money on? Well, wait, this thing was... Oh, it was sold. I guess it hasn't transferred yet. That must be it. Okay. As for France's disastrous run into Galicia. See, I don't know how this is going to work. Does the armed... Does the army force from Galicia move out into Ukraine and France takes its place? I have no idea how this is going to work. Some of these game mechanics are a bit wonky. Anyway, um, this is going to take a couple more months. And I'm just really happy that we found, finally, finally, finally found the uh, Divine Broadside actually showing off what she can do. And now I need to see more. So eventually... Eventually, we'll have to pit that thing against the United States fleet. The problem is, I am besties with the US at the moment. So, this means I'm not likely going to be in any kind of a threat level with them anytime soon. Also, they got 4.8 million tonnage of navy. That's a big navy. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the Divine Broadside. And I'll see you soon for more.